What happened? Was it that tea? Oh, I better go find my cookies. Insane. I feel like my organs were stretched and shrunken. Well, I just feel crazy. <sighs> hey everybody, welcome to Storytime with Jen. My name is Jen. What's your name? Oh, how magical. Today we'll be reading Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. An amazing pop-up book by Robert Sabuda. But before I get started, let's make sure you're ready to listen by tickling your ears. Are you ready? Great, let's begin. Wow, look at this big tree with a cat on it. Look, and Alice is running around outside. I wish I had some friends with me to read this pop-up book. Wow. Yes, it's a kitty cat. It is a kitty cat. And look, look at this. It's a Mad Hatter, I think. And who's this one? They both don't like wow. each other. Yeah, and listen up. Alice was beginning to get very this. tired. In a pond and open place with a little house. Why the baby's crying? Whoever lives here, thought Alice. Ill. was outside hanging out with her sister when she heard a white rabbit say, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late. She ran across the field after it and was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. She followed the rabbit and went down a very deep well. Suddenly, she came upon a little three-legged table. She found a little bottle on it with the words, drink me. Alice ventured to taste it and finding it very nice, she finished it off. And Alice shrunk to only 10 inches tall. She finished all the cake and grew nine feet tall. She was so sad and started to cry. But because she was so big, she cried a pool of tears. Poor Alice felt very lonely and low-spirited. In a little while, however, she heard a little pattering of footsteps in the distance. It was the white rabbit again. She came upon a neat little house on which was a bright brass plate with the name W. Rabbit. Does that stand for White Rabbit? She went in and found her way to a tidy little room with a table in the window and on it a fan. 
and tiny white kid gloves. She stretched herself on tiptoe and peeped over the edge of the mushroom and her eyes immediately met those of a large blue caterpillar quietly smoking a long hookah. All she could see when she looked down was an immense length of neck a large pigeon had flown into her face. Serpent, screamed the pigeon. I'm not a serpent, said Alice indignantly. She came upon an open place with a little house in it about four feet high. Suddenly, a footman came running out of the wood. Judging by his face only, she would have called him a fish. There's certainly too much pepper in that soup, said Alice. And as for the baby, it was sneezing and howling alternately without a moment's pause. There was a table set out under a tree in front of the house and the March Hare and the Hatter. No room, no room, they cried when they saw Alice coming. Neither of the others took the least notice of her going. The last time she saw them, they were trying to put the Dormouse into the teapot. This here ought to have been a red rose tree, and we put a white one in by mistake. For the Duchess, an invitation from the Queen to play croquet. The mallets? Live flamingos! Alice was beginning to feel uneasy. It's the Cheshire Cat. The griffin sat up and rubbed its eyes. I'll tell it, said the mock turtle in a deep hollow tone. The king and queen of hearts were seated on their throne with a great crowd assembled around them. And near the king was a white rabbit with a trumpet in one hand and a scroll in the other. You're nothing but a pack of cards. At this, the whole pack rose up into the air and came flying down upon her. Wake up, Alice dear, said her sister. Why, what a long sleep you've had. Oh, I've had such a curious dream. She was sleeping all along. What kind of dreams have you had? Wow, that's really cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed this magical dream today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you later.